Today's video is sponsored by Berry House Coffee Roasters. Welcome back. I'm Tedward and welcome to the first drive of my 2023 Honda Civic Type R. I did not think I would be saying that so early in the game. I really expected to own my Civic Si for a bit longer, but man, these things just came in fast and furious. And here we are taking delivery at the end of December. Not the ideal timing for a sports car in New England, but we're gonna make do. So you've seen that the car has already been cleaned up, washed, decontaminated, ceramic coated, paint protection film from the door forward. So we should be just protected enough to get through a New England winter without stone ships and nightmare situations. But one thing that's glaringly obviously bad is the fact that we are on these beautiful Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's. As much as I love this tire in normal conditions, they are not a good winter tire. So I've already scrambled to buy a set of winter wheels and tires. So we should be good for the snowy weather and the cold weather for that matter, because these things just turn into hockey pucks and you'll slide around like a hockey puck. It's, it's pretty sketchy, um, but we have just enough heat in the air and in the ground today to get a little heat in those. We can go play around, but we are still in the break-in period. Now, there is no break-in period for these cars technically at least from what I've read. You can't find anything in the owner's manual. And the owner's manual for the Type R is very generic. It is like the Civic Hatchback owner's manual, whereas the Civic Si actually showed a 600 mile recommended break-in for the 1.5 liter turbo. This car famously has a two liter single turbo. And I'm going to assume that a reasonable or at least prudent break-in period is going to be about 600 to 1,000 miles. Now, before we even get started, how exciting is it that the FL5 is here? I, I've been so psyched about this car for so long. I wanted to buy an FK8 LE when those came out, but I just couldn't get my hands on one. Now we have this beautiful hood vent that helps us keep the car cool, which should come in handy at the track and under the hood mostly the same situation that we had in the fk8 although we have a different intake a different turbo or at least a refined turbo but overall i mean they really they've really done a lot of work there this thing is just such a little monster the stance of the car is so outrageously wide. I'm really thrilled at the curb appeal of the Type R. I think this front bumper is just incredible. I love the Type R red Honda emblem here. And the only thing that's a bummer is that these are fake. This is not a real vent or anything that goes into the wheel well, but this grill is incredibly open and ready for action and real cooling stuff. These box fenders, they're very like Subaru WRX STI. I mean, that's what I'm seeing when I look at this. My my SI, it, it was about, it ended about here. It, it was flush with this headlight. And now you've got all this girth coming out the sides, which is wild. One of the best features on this car though, is the fact that we've got these big Brembo brakes. These are incredible. And what's really cool about these is that you get two piece floating rotors from the factory. You did get that on the later years of the FK8. So it's not unfamiliar territory for type R owners. <sighs> but I'm just thankful it's there. We've got this cool vent that comes through here to help lower pressure and make the car a little more aerodynamic. These side skirts I'm pretty psyched about because I do believe these, uh, this black rocker here is probably gonna protect some of the paint on that lower part. Now, it's hard not to treat every new car like you've just collected a Ferrari. There are things about this car that I was like, ooh, there was like a tiny little rock chip. And I'm like, you know what? It's not an Enzo, it's not a GT3, it's a Honda, and that's the beauty of it, because if anything is wrong, it can be fixed. It can be fixed. And we've already touched up the couple imperfections that were in it. So before we finish walking around the car, let's just get it started to warm it up. Now, unlike my SI, we're gonna do a little bit of SI comparison here. We have a full LCD display here with the shift lights. We'll not be seeing any shift lights today because we're not going to get near red line while we're breaking the car in. Not what I wanted to do. Um, but this is great. And what's nice about it too is that you get a water temp gauge. And in the SI, all you had was a little blue light that told you if the car was, you know, too cold to be really pushing. And that's lame, not great. In this car, 
we even have our Honda Log R thing, which allows us to see so much more information. We've got our water temp, our oil temp will start to register when it gets above a certain threshold, oil pressure, like all kinds of great info that you're gonna want, even just to keep your car's longevity up to snuff because you know you shouldn't be really running up a car's revs until the oil temp is up to snuff and a lot of cars only show you that water temp which can get there a lot faster than the oil temp okay let's keep walking around you'll also notice no sunroof on the type r so that is a lighter roof although the car is a little bit heavier than the si and then this is all new bodywork for the Type R. So unlike the FK8, this door is actually bespoke to the Type R because they didn't just run it up and put a big you know, body kit on the side of it. They actually form fit the door to that rear quarter, which is great. Even this is bespoke to the Type R. And what's wild is that we don't have a capless filler. I kind of can't believe they did this. This is this is a little bit disappointing. I've been told it's because they needed to build this car for the entire world and I guess it doesn't fit regulations of certain markets. Kind of a bummer, but I guess I will have to get used to being a pleb and <laughs> unscrewing my gas cap again in the back. Some people seem really polarized about the rear end of this car. I, I think it looks fantastic and I love the design of this three-tip exhaust now. The center exhaust is valved so that valve does not open until you get the revs up a certain amount. Some people are torn about this wing. It's grown on me a lot. It is a beefy large wing. There is an optional carbon wing that provides a little more downforce. That's a slightly different shape. I think this fits the car. I think it especially looks great in championship white and I love that we've got the rear wiper that has already served me well. The taillight design, I think, is much more Japanese than the sedan. I think the hatchback looks so good, and this really fits the Type R. I like this sort of jagged edge that comes back. And by the way, this center light bar is actually the third taillight. So that comes on when you get on the brakes. There's no funky taillight in the glass. Let's get in here. Oh my goodness, so much space. And unlike the Integra, which is essentially a hatchback Civic Si, this loading deck, I guess, is whatever you want to call it, is so much lower than the Integra. The Integra is about here. So I think the practicality of the Civic is also a little better than the Integra. And I'll be curious to see, I mean, I assume it will be exactly the same in the Integra Type S when that eventually comes out. But back here, we've got loads of space. We can fold down our 60-40 split on the rear seats. And these beautiful, but I will likely almost never use them, red type r floor mats these will get dirty so incredibly fast and in fact when we drove the car at the press launch in california those cars had like 600 miles on them we were probably the second wave to drive them maybe third they were already pretty dirty <laughs> so i already bought weather tech mats you'll see those in a second um let's see i do actually really dig that there's a little handle here i mean yes of course you're going to have a handle in the hatchback and i know i know i can already hear the the comments it's not a hatchback it's a lift back look call it whatever you want i don't care <laughs> in the back oh i just love this car it's a four-seater it is not a five-seater so that right off the bat probably a deal breaker for you know one or two of you but for the most part I, I drive alone, or maybe I have one passenger. Um, great space back here. And now that we have our floor mats in, which actually cover the center as well, I can sit back here pretty shamelessly. There's no creature comforts back here. There's not even an armrest. You get your cup holders, end of list. And there's no USB you know, station back here for charging anything. You're on your own, except for the fact that the driver, or at least, you know, passenger, has wireless charging. So that means you have two charge ports up front. So you could technically charge, you know, three at a time or four if you plugged one into that uh, 12 volt thing as well. So, you know, you could charge all the phones on the road trip if you need to. The visibility out of this car is phenomenal. You've got these little side glass things here for the quarters. Um, when you're in the driver's seat, you cannot see the wing at all through the, the rear mirror. It, it, they, they put it up at just the right height to be able to deal with that. But these rear seats, still plenty of room. This is plenty practical for most people. 
The car does have some ambient lighting up front. This car does not have ambient lighting in the rear. So these are blank in the rear. They're red, they glow red at night in the front. But they did not forgo the red seat belts in the rear seats. Very glad they carried over the stitching and the red seat belts back here because I just think it really adds to the car. And actually with the black WeatherTech mats, it helps subdue some of the insanity of the red. Compared to the SI, these mirrors are also a little more premium because you get the side marker. So this will blink when you put the directionals on. Inside, we have a bit nicer upholstery. You've got the Alcantara here and here. And then these seats are probably my favorite seats in the game right now. First of all, they look outrageous. They've got the Type R embroidered in here. You've got the red stitching on the red, two-tone with the black back. And they are so supportive. They are so comfortable. And they are barely adjustable. These are very manual. They go up down you can recline and you can move the seat forward and backwards there is no lumbar support adjustment however they did put a really nice lumbar pad here and i genuinely think that if honda has a hard time selling cars in the next few years they need to go into selling office chairs because whoever is designing their seats understands the shape of a human body like nobody else okay inside We've got some changes. This blank button. There is no auto start stop in your Type R. Huzzah! I don't have to turn it off every time I get in the car. I had gotten used to that in my SI. And in fact, there were some places where I would often just let it ride because there were some red lights that I'd sit at for, you know, a minute at a time if there was traffic. And, you know, sometimes you just don't want to run the engine. The big concession with this car is fuel economy because I was getting 40 miles per gallon regularly in my SI. In fact, I, I clocked 39.9 at the end of my over 13,000 mile run in that car from March to December. In this car, on a similar drive that I'd be getting 40, I'm getting about 28 in this car, cons being really conservative. All right, steering wheel. I think the leather might be the same it feels a little more premium than the si but right here this is chrome in the integra in the si it is black in the type r and then our steering wheel controls are different because we have a full lcd display not just the half so there's no home button but you can adjust different things over here i still need to get used to that a little bit unfortunately no handbrake we will survive. And then we have our drive modes, which actually do something because this car has adjustable dampers and it does make a difference. It really does. Um, let's go here. We also have a navigation system in this car, which did not exist. And I'm not going to put it there because you don't need to know exactly where my home is. The navigation system did not exist in the SI, but it does in the Type R. And this right here is not red in the Type R. Funny that it's red. There's there's that red piece in the SI, but there is a lacking red piece in the Type R. This one is R00914. That is my badge number. It does not coincide with the VIN. The VIN is different. The last three digits of the VIN is not 914. Let's back it out of the driveway and go for our first little drive in the Type R. But first, today's video is sponsored by Berry House Coffee Roasters. Berry House Coffee Roasters has been a family-owned business since 1934, handcrafted in New York, and when I took my first sip of this beautiful coffee, I knew this was a match made in heaven, and it's guilt-free because their fair trade organic coffees are ethically sourced, and they're a strong supporter of green initiatives and women-owned farms. Berry House knows their coffee, and it's no surprise that they're focused on high-quality, premium coffees that are distinct, well-balanced, and delicious when you brew your first cup. So do yourself a favor and make Berry House Coffee part of your morning routine. And this car is so stiff that it just about tripods coming out of my driveway. You're made immediately aware that this isn't a normal Civic or an SI right when you roll off the clutch. It's so much more dialed in. It's so much more like honed out of a single piece of metal feeling than those cars. You don't have to adapt to it at all. This drives like a car. The shifter feel is above and beyond the SI, which I already loved. So this is great. This is to me like 
getting into an RS4 versus an S4. The Audi RS cars always felt so much more honed and perfect and, and like kathunk. They had stronger clutches. Everything about this car kind of feels like an RS variant. It has just instant, instant response in this chassis. Everything feels so aimed at performance. It does not feel like any, honestly, it's wild. This is so above and beyond the agility of even my E92 M3, where I get in this car and I just cannot believe this is a Honda. Price, it's about 45 grand, just under 45 grand. And that's with, that's including destination. People have gotten like really up in arms about that. And I understand like $45,000 is a lot of money. We're not even talking ADM, you know, people are paying 60, $70,000 for these cars. So I understand that it, it can get worse. Um, but for $45,000, I don't know of a car that feels this dialed, that feels this rigid, that feels this together and is this capable. These brakes, man. Oh, I cannot believe I got these brakes. This is so good. It's better than my M3 brakes. Now the sound of this engine emotionally, not incredible, right? I mean, you're probably not going to get a, a high strung two liter in your life again since the old days when we had NA K series revving to like eight, 9,000 RPM. This engine also provides quite a bit more low end torque than the 1.5 liter. Obviously it has more torque, but it comes on sooner. So I feel like I can, I can rev it less. There's less requirement for adding revs between shifts. I can't wait to really like wind this out and show you how insane this differential is because driving it in California on street and track really blew my mind. But one of the big differences is that when I was driving in California, the roads we were on were pretty nice. They really were. I live in Massachusetts. Our roads are not pretty nice. They are pretty horrible, actually. This car's stiffer than the SI in a big way, in a pretty big way. I'm in comfort mode right now. This is as soft as they get. The first thing I thought was like, oh, there must not be any air in these tires. I must be running on the rim <laughs> because there is not a lot of sidewall on this thing. And you feel everything. Really, you feel everything. And that's okay, however, when it comes to winter driving, when the roads get torn up, when there's frost heaves and all kinds of crap, that's when you wanna have some sidewalls. So I'm looking forward to my 18 inch instead of 19 inch wheels. They'll have a little more sidewall. Rev hang seems really minimal especially compared to the SI. It does not bother me. Everything feels really cohesive. I don't feel like I have to adapt to the car very much. Again, we're just in, we're just in comfort mode. So tempting to rev the absolute daylights out of it. We're not gonna do it. We're gonna be good. Gonna be good little break-in monkeys. I love the way this grabs the road. I love the way this gives so much confidence in a corner. It corners so flat. Cabin noise is existent. <laughs> it is not the quietest car. I don't mind it on a road like this. What do I care? We're having some fun. Um, on the highway though, it's a little intrusive and I do anticipate that going to my winter tires, I think that might dial it out a little bit.
there are no heated seats or heated steering wheel in the Type R. I anticipate that we'll get that in the Integra Type S, uh, more luxury features in that car. But it warms up quick enough. It's still only a little two liter. It doesn't take too long to get some heat in this thing and, and, and actually start blowing warm air. I think my biggest takeaway about this car in terms of performance is how much confidence it gives you on a back road. I, I actually don't know that many cars that feel this inspiring on a back road. This is like maybe one of my favorite back road carving cars ever, unless we're counting like a Caterham 7 or maybe a Lotus Elise, but I actually feel more confident in this than I do in, 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 a, in, the, in a Lotus. And I know some of the BMW people who you know, came to my channel because of the M3, they may not get it. They may not understand how you go from an M3 to a Honda Civic. And to that, I say go drive one. Because if you like driving, this car will appeal to you. I, I genuinely believe that. I really believe that you can't drive this car and not get it. I think I get it if you look at the numbers or you even watch videos, maybe even this video doesn't do it for you and you're like, I don't know, that was a chicken, okay. But driving this car is just such a game changer and oh, that's the worst noise in the world. And I just don't think you can drive this car, <laughs> like even that, I know you can't feel that, but the way this thing tucks into a corner is so special. It's so impressive. And these brakes are are so good. Like it's not good for a Civic. It's good for like any performance car. And a lot of performance cars have like lost their way and I don't want to get too poetic about this and be like, "Man, I wish it was like it used to be." Of course we do. Of course we want like high, strong, naturally aspirated things. But this car handles so well and it doesn't feel like a heavy pig. I gotta say, I, I don't really like M cars anymore. There's not, I don't get like the excitement about a new M car anymore. I like GT3s, I think that's kind of like as, as much as I get fizz for anymore. This is really exciting. And again, it's not exciting for a Honda, it's exciting for an enthusiast. So. I'm gonna go keep putting some break-in miles on this thing so we can have some fun. Hey, puppy. Uh, so we can have some fun this winter and maybe we'll get out to California and find our way into a Type R press car in the Malibu Canyons or something and have some more fun with that before it melts here in New England for me to get this thing on track. But I'm excited to get this thing on some proper winter rubber and some wheels that will not shatter under potholes. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Please feel free to ask whatever questions you have or let me know what you think about the Type R. I mean, try to be positive. You know, if you're gonna be negative, at least frame it in a reasonable way. I don't like seeing the hate in the comments. It's, it's exhausting, it's taxing. You know, maybe I'm giving a tell by saying it matters, but like, I don't know. If you don't like it, it's fine. That's okay. If you don't like the appearance, that's subjective. Um, but. I will say, you gotta drive one. Please, please drive one. You're gonna start seeing these around more and more. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.